So here's the story um, to, to this point. You take in the visual world in a massively parallel manner th um, through your eyes. There is a mandatory, severe bottleneck in processing um, that allows you to bind and recognize one or maybe very few objects at a time. To deal with that bottleneck, you have guiding mechanisms, including these feature mechanisms, and then we should add the scene-specific ones, that allow you to regulate what gets into that bottleneck so it's not just random stuff, it's an intelligent subset of the world. And you can, um, and, and you can get around the world pretty well on that basis. Now, once you've actually selected something into that bottleneck, you have to decide whether or not it's the, uh, the target. Here we have Laurence Olivier in, in, in Hamlet having selected a target which turned out to be um, a, a false alarm. Um, the, there's much more serious consequences to false alarm errors in Shakespeare than in the typical laboratory research, fortunately. Um, but well, let me take you through a simpler selection example. So let's imagine you're looking for a T among L's. You select an item. We typically think about a trial as a single two alternative forced choice sort of event, but that's not really what's happening. Um, what's happening in a search task is you've got to make a, a decision about this item, and that's a little two AFC decision all by itself. And it's a, trivial, it's a trivial signal detection problem if you're looking for a T among L's. If you're looking for cancer in a, in a mammogram and you attend to this and attend to this, it's a much more complicated decision. And you're making a series of these decisions during search. So if your decision is that it's a target, OK, you make one, you, 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 you've found a target. But if not, you now have to make a second class of decision, which is, is it time to quit? If I'm not going to find a target, I need to get out of this search sometime because there's a stack of mammograms I've got to read. Um, or there's a, a, a stack of, you know, the bags keep coming at the airport um, checkpoint. And so there's a second decision here where you can imagine some sort of pressure to quit diffusing towards a, a threshold. That's a second sort of decision that gets made in search. If you don't quit, you loop back, you select something else, and you make this series of decisions until you finally make the overt response that we've been measuring all these years. Notice that there are two separate decision criteria in this story, one for the thing you selected and one to decide whether you quit. Now, let's think about this in the context of the real world. Um, there are this uh, collection of socially important tasks um, have you found the weapon yet here? That's some sort of knife. These are not easy tasks. Um, when we do these in the lab, we only use knives and guns because the difficult task, which is um, explosives, is too hard for untrained observers to do at all. Um, this is another uh, difficult search task, big set size. This is what a pap smear looks like if you're doing a cervical cancer test, uh, that is the sort of thing that you're looking for that's bad, by the way, among all of these, um, these things. And here again is a, is a mammogram. For the present example, what's, an impo what's important about all of these search tasks is that they are all searches for very rare items. They are characterized by what we can call low prevalence. Uh, in, a, in a screening population of, of um, women, Breast cancer shows up about a third of a percent of the time. You don't want to be at the airport when guns, bombs, and knives show up much more often than that, and, and so on. So you're looking for something rare. Does that matter? So we've done a whole series of experiments where we take um, essentially the same set of images. Well, exactly the same set of images. So this is not a real one, but, but here's an example of, an, of, of a, uh, a bag with a threat in it take those and embed them either in a stack of images where there are threats present on 50% of the trials or on 2% of the trials. What happens? Well, here's what happens. 50% in black, 2% in red. The miss error rates 
for the same images, for the same threats, go way up at low prevalence. You miss many more targets at low prevalence than you um, ever missed at, um, at high prevalence. Um, now, you also, if you use a task that's difficult enough, like any of the ones that I've shown you, you will also make false alarm errors. The false alarm errors go the other direction. So high prevalence in black again, low prevalence in red. The low prevalence false alarm errors are vanishingly small. So really, um, th those of you in the, uh, with a fondness for signal detection theory will, will recognize this as the classic sign of a criterion shift, right? Miss errors go one way, false alarms go the other way. When the prevalence is very low, you are more likely to say no. When the prevalence is higher, you're more likely to say yes. Um, that's interesting, that's understandable, um, and that's potentially a problem if what you're thinking about is detection of threats, detection of cancer, and, um, uh, and so on. 